and my wife, we have a rule. It's not really a rule. It's just something that, that organically happened between us because we were friends at first, even though I had my eye on her, we had an understanding that how we would correct each other in real time. We don't wait to the next day. We don't wait till tomorrow. And like, remember I said this to you a month ago? Nope, nope. Then, and then and there. So it, even if it's in front of the people who we may not, not want to hear us being corrected in front of, we still correct each other. And it's not like a habit of like, oh, I got you, you got me, remember that time. It's just a, a thing where we have to understand that it's better just to get it out of the way and address some things and, you know, talk about it, get it out, and you can move on. Some people are very um, childish when it, when it comes to being corrected by our mate or when it comes to us being uh, being enlightened. I, I, I'll put it like that. I think that's a better word <laughs> by our mate. All right. So wives, I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be encouraged to talk to your husband. Uh, Bathsheba had to correct her husband, but he was a king and you know, the king will have you killed if you come on with any, any job mess back then. It's not like a president or anything, but it's a king. And King David was old in his, old in his age, but Bathsheba had to let him know like, yo, you promised the king to my son Solomon and Adonijah is out here doing whatever he has to do in order to get the kingdom. And on, on top of all that, his name, his very name is Adonijah. You know what Adonijah means? It means my Lord is Jehovah. My Lord is Jehovah. That's what Adonijah means. So everything looks and sounds like it's right. Oh my God, the son's name, Adonijah. Oh, all the king's men is down there. The priest is down there. They have lit the fatted calf. The brothers are down there, all the brothers. And you know, everything looks like it's going forward. They are actually singing this man's praises. But you wife, God has dropped something on the inside of you. And it's for you to release to your husbands. See, never have a marriage where your wife can't speak to you. Because what does the Bible say that a wife is to you? She is your helpmate. She is there to get it done with you. Amen. She is there to make sure you are all right. And if she can't pour into you, then you have to reconsider who you have chose for a wife and why did you make the wrong decision? But guess what? She's your wife now. So you have to hear her out. You have to make room. Bathsheba was at her wit's end pretty much because she's seeing all this go down in real time. Look, they were blowing the trumpet. Adonijah is, is, is primed to be king. Everyone is there. They're clapping. They're blowing the horn. They got the fatted calf. They're eating. Everybody's married. So they're toasting. He's probably giving the speech. And But the wife has information that's saying, like, wait a minute. You said my son is going to be a king. And I need you to do what you need to do. And she had to go in and she had to humble herself, bow herself down. See, we don't bow ourselves down no more. But what does that tell me Tell me when I see her bow down? What does that tell me when I see her go to a man of God and say, we're going to conspire to get to the kingdom, to put his information back in his ear? It wasn't, they wasn't doing nothing deceitful. They wasn't doing anything like Jacob and his mother was doing. They were just reminding the king, who was old and was bad stricken, that, yo, you said that my son was going to be king, and I need for you to do exactly what you said you were going to do. That's the whole reason why we're here. But they still humbled themselves. If you notice, when they came in, they both bowed down. Like, why did, why did the Bible write they both bowed down when they went before the king? I truly believe, like, why did they have to say that? Why did they have to write that? They could have just said, I went before the king, and the king said this, but they're telling, they're showing you specific instructions that they did. In other words, so they got together, and they talked about what they needed to do, but also that bowing down can mean two things. One, it's a, it's a sign of reverence to the person that you're going through, so don't just go to them any type of way. Make sure you go in peace. That's number one. The second thing it tells me, it's a position of surrender. It's a position of surrender, a position of prayer. So it's telling you that you should be praying about this when you do this. 
So this is to uh, to the men who you got your wives out here, and it's great. And but your wife is going to come to you. I'm telling you now, it's going to be beautiful. But to hear her out. And remember what it says in Proverbs 10, 17, it says that accept correction and you will find life. Then, then it goes on to say, reject correction and you will miss the road and you will miss wherever it is that you have to go. You're going to miss it. 